Hello, friends. Shana Tova. Here we are again at the Rosh Hashanah, the head of the new year. And while we certainly didn't think we were going to be doing it like this again together, we're so glad that at least we get to do this and know that it's going out to all of you. I am Rabbi Souther, and I'm so, so grateful to get to spend another Rosh Hashanah with you for our Kulanu, everyone together, family service. And we're joined this year by a new face who we're really excited to have in our community, Iran Sebo. And I'm going to pass the mic over to him to introduce himself. Hello, everyone. Shana Tova. Can we all turn to someone next to us and say Shana Tova? Shana Tova. <laughs> so happy to be here. Um, again, my name is Elan Sabo. I'm the Assistant Director of Education and Hebrew Coordinator, and I'm thrilled to be here with this beautiful community. And what better way to start the year than singing together, right? So we're going to start with the Hine Matov. Find a comfortable seat. Hine matov, umanai, shedachi gam yachad. Hine matov, umanai, shedachi gam yachad. Repeat after me how good it is, how sweet it is to be together on this day. It is how sweet it is to be together on this day. Nematov, umanan, shevetahi ganach. Nematov, umanan, shevetahi Good and sweet. What a perfect Hine Matov for Rosh Hashanah, where we wish each other a sweet new year. We want goodness and sweetness in the year ahead. And since it's our morning, you might, who knows when you're watching this, but it could be in the morning. And we are going to offer gratitude for our breath, for the soul that is within us. So before we do that, let's just take a moment to take a big stretch. Can we take a really big stretch? I'm gonna take a big stretch. Mm, yeah, and then maybe a little twist. Yeah, a little tw gentle little twist. Mm -hmm. oh, hi, Nelson, you are my sunshine. It feels so good to get to be in our bodies and know that our souls are enlivening our bodies and our bodies are holding our souls. So we're going to sing a little bit of gratitude prayer for that magic. All right. So this is the time to cuddle. Find someone you love. And we're going to Get really, really close. You can sway a little bit from side to side. I'm going to start with You Are My Sunshine, and then we're going to transition right into the words of Mode Ani with the same melody. Here we go. You are my sunshine, my only sunshine. You make me happy when skies are gray. My sunshine away and one more time. You are my sunshine, my only sunshine. You make me happy when skies are gray. You never know, dear, how much I love you. Please don't take my sunshine away. More than I Part of our service, which is a question 
but it's what we call a rhetorical question, which means it's a question that we already know the answer to. And the answer is yes, yes, I am here. And we ask ourselves, am I awake? Am I prepared? Am I ready? Am I ready to do this special service, this time together that's different from all the other time? And the answer is yes, whether you really feel it or not. There's a phrase, we say, we fake it till we make it. So maybe you're faking it or maybe not. Maybe you're here and you're ready. Like us, we're here, we're ready. So for Baruch Hu, we're going to ask that you take an upright position. Maybe you stand up on your feet. For us, I'm going to lift my heart up to the sky so that it feels really nice and lifted. And Iran's got a nice, tall, straight back. And we are going to sing Baruch Hu to welcome in this prayerful space. Yalla la 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 Yalla 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 la 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 Am I awake? Am I prepared? Are you listening? Can you understand? Am I awake? Am I prepared? prepared. I am ready. We are going to take a moment of mindfulness. All right. So before we move on to our next piece, I want you guys to put out your hands out like this. Yeah. And you can really give it a good stretch. I feel like you can feel like in your shoulders. Great. Now shake them out. Get rid of anything you don't want. Great. And the next thing for the next thing, we're going to inhale through our nose and exhale through our mouth. And we're gonna do this. When we inhale, we're gonna roll our hands in. So try it with me, inhale through your nose. And roll the other way and exhale. Great, we're gonna do this three times, but I wanna invite you to think of something that you want more of in your life. When you inhale, when you bring that thing in, you make it stronger, right? And you kind of set yourself up for the year. You're going to want more of that thing. When you exhale, you're going to let go of something that you want less of or that's not really so good for you. All right? So we're going to do it three times. Remember, inhale through your nose, exhale through your mouth. I don't know about you, but I already feel more relaxed. And I'm going to continue with the Shema. I invite you to kind of maintain that spirit, that Ruach that, that we're in right now. And you can close your eyes if you want also. Shema Ah. Uh -huh. 
After placing those words upon our hearts, we shift into the moment where really our people was born, right? Before this micha, mom, micha mocha moment in the text, our people were, you know, sort of loosely affiliated. We had a common experience in Egypt. Remember the Passover story, right? Being in bondage, enslaved in Egypt. But it wasn't really until this moment where the Israelites had escaped and Moses was leading them and God was leading them, leading Moses. And then they arrived at the water, this big sea, and they didn't know how they were going to get across. You've probably heard me tell this story before, but it's one of my favorites. Our tradition teaches two different versions, a couple different versions. One, that the Israelites were frozen. They were frozen on the edge of the sea. And it wasn't until one person, Nachshon ben Aminadab, walked into the waters. Just that first person went for it. And the waters got up to Nachshon's mouth. And Nachshon said, Mi mocha ba'elim Adonai, mi ka as the water got stuck in his throat, Mika mocha ne'etar ba'kodesh, who is like you, O oh God. And the waters parted. And so sometimes all it takes is for one of us to be brave. And that's a real feature of this Jewish peoplehood. But sometimes it just takes one of us to be brave. And maybe that's you. Maybe sometimes it's you to be the brave one. And maybe sometimes it's you to sit back and wait for the brave one. But if we sit back and wait and no one steps up, then maybe it's you. Either way, we get this beautiful Micha Mocha moment. So let's sing.
Amida, our central standing prayer. Amida means the standing. And it's the time in our service where we offer gratitude, yes, but we also just sort of say, wow. So there's this really wonderful writer. Her name is Anne Lamott. And she teaches that all prayers across all humanity through all history can be sorted into three categories, help, thanks, and wow. And so on Rosh Hashanah, just kind of like on Shabbat, we sort of say goodbye to the help prayers. Every other day, every other day of the week, we can ask for the things that we need. Did you know that? We can ask for the things that we need, not only from God, but from the people around us. And as young people, we get really used to asking for the things that we need, right? I can't reach the crackers. Can I have a cracker, please? That's the nice way to ask for it. But we can also ask things of God, right? On Rosh Hashanah, we focus on the thanks and the wow. So, we're going to take a few minutes here. We want you to turn to the people next to you and share the things that you are grateful for in your life. And also something that you just thought was wonderful that you experienced this year. Something, wow, like maybe you saw a rainbow, right? We get a lot of rainbows up here and that's a wow moment. And maybe you really, really, really wanted to have to go to the, the strawberry patch this summer. And so you got to go to the strawberry patch and go strawberry picking. That's a thanks, right? So we'll take a minute and Iran will maybe play some music, just some soft music for us as we turn to the people around us and ask, what am I thankful for? And what was just wow this year? Wow. There's so much to be thankful for, right? That's a wow in and of itself. At the end of our Amida, we say these words, Ose shalom bimromav, hu ya ose shalom aleinu. May the one who creates peace, wholeness. Shalom is the same word, shares the same three letter roots as shalem, which means wholeness. And so we learn something about peace from that. Peace is that feeling when we have everything together, everything that we need, maybe not everything that we want, but everything that we need, and we can feel that peace in our bodies. And so coming in from thanks and wow, we then sit in this feeling of wholeness with Ose Shalom. Let's all take a deep breath together. Ose Shalom. Shalom Shalom Aleinu, ve'al kol Israel. 
Shalom, Shalom Aleinu, ve'al kol Yisrael, Yase Shalom, Yase Shalom, Shalom Aleinu, ve'al kol Yisrael, Yase Shalom, Yase Shalom, Shalom Aleinu, ve'al kol Yisrael, Yase Shalom, Yase Shalom, Shalom Aleinu. Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, we add some special prayers. It is the holiest time of year, after all. It's the beginning of a new year. And we say this prayer, Avinu Malkenu, which translates to Avinu, our father, Av, Malkenu, our king. We hear the word Melech, right, that we say every time we say a blessing. And Avinu Malkenu is this way of helping us think about God in one particular way. There are more ways to think about God than there even are humans on this planet, because every human on this planet can have multiple ways to think about God, because truly, we don't know. <laughs> ah, we don't know. And that's okay, because God has promised us throughout our Torah that we're going to be in relationship with God, and it's up to us to figure out the ways that work. God's okay with it. And so this is one of those ways where we say, Avinu Malkinu, God, you are like our parent, meaning you are like the one who brought us into life. And God, you are like our king or our queen, our sovereign. We don't have kings or queens in, in our culture, right? But we understand the idea, this one who is noble and this one who is has majesty, and who ultimately is charged with taking care of us. That's the thing a parent is charged with too. And so when we say avinu malkenu, what we are saying is God who loves us like a parent, God who wants the best for us like a king or a queen, please look at our lives. Look at all the things we've done this year, the places where we've missed the mark, where we've done something we wished we hadn't, or we did something we didn't know was wrong and we learned from it. Please look at all those things as well as all the things I'm proud of and love me. And do you know what? God always says, yes, I love you. We just go through all these prayers to make sure that we are doing our own kind of spiritual housekeeping. So Avinu Malkinu, we take another nice tall seat and we think for just a moment about the ways that we've maybe missed the mark in this past year. And if they don't immediately come to mind, that's okay. But they might, <laughs> and that's okay too. We hold those moments in our mind and instead of feeling ashamed or feeling guilty, we ask, what did I learn from that moment? And that's what we hold. We hold both of those things in our hearts as we sing Avinu Malkinu. <laughs> Okay. Oh, 
sound of the high holidays for sure. So take another moment of mindfulness. And we just sit with our breath. And like we did with Shema, we welcome in goodness. We let go of all the things we want to let go of this year. We'll take three breaths and do that. story time. So you may be familiar with the story of the way the world was created. Rosh Hashanah is also known as Hayom Harat HaOlam, the day the world was created. So it's the new year for us, but also we celebrate the new year because it's like the birthday of the world. Happy birthday, world. And so I want to take us back to our Torah and the Torah portion that we read, one of the Torah portions that we read on Rosh Hashanah is called Bereshit, which means in the beginning or in a beginning. And the first, 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 first part of our Torah tells this story of how God created the world over the course of six days, right? First day, day and night. Second day, heaven and earth. Third day, plants and trees. And after the end of these days, God said, and that's good. And that's good. And this is good. Right. And so then we got fins and wings and then we got, uh, creatures and then we got animals and then we got humans. But I want to take us to that day um, where the animals and the humans came together, our first sort of full day. Because then on the seventh day, God said, that's good. That's enough. I'm going to rest. So on the sixth day, there were all of these animals, all of these creatures. There were birds in the sky and in the trees, and there were fish and big sea mammals like whales and dolphins and sharks even and jellyfish, all of those creatures in the sea. And then there were all the creatures on the land too. Every creature imaginable, even some of the ones that we can't possibly imagine because right, it was you know the first go around. And there were humans. There were these, these two humans and they all lived in this garden, the Garden of Eden, which we are told was a perfect place. The world was created in this like perfect beauty. And all these animals and birds and fish and humans all lived together in harmony. And so on the first day, 
you know, when the humans awoke and the animals awoke and they were all sort of interacting together, getting to know each other, getting to know the land around them. And, oh, that tree has really yummy fruit. And, oh, do you know, if you dig under the earth here, there's like a carrot that you can eat and that's delicious too. And all these things. And over the course of the day, we notice that this big, bright orb, there it is, in the sky was slowly moving across the sky. They thought, huh, that's curious. Nothing else around us except us is moving. I wonder what that's about. And the sun got really high in the sky and it got hot and everybody went for shelter and shade. And they thought, oh, that's strange. I haven't felt this way before. It's very hot. Let's get some water to drink. Let's sit in the shade. And then the sun started dipping down on the other side of the sky. And all the creatures looked at each other and realized, oh my goodness, the sun has traveled all the way across the sky over the course of this beautiful day in this beautiful place. And now it's over there. And over there is this line. And after that line, there's nothing. And the sun's going to dip below that line. What's going to happen when the sun dips below that line? Oh my goodness, we're going to be destroyed. That's it. We just got this one, just this one time, this one experience. And so the animals all gathered together and the birds gathered together and the, the fish of the sea, you know, kind of gathered together in their pods and they sat and they said, oh, this was such a beautiful, beautiful experience. And it was yummy and delicious and it was wonderful. And oh my goodness, we're so sad for it to end. And the sun dipped below the horizon. They didn't know it was called the horizon, but we know that the sun dipped below the horizon and everything started to get dark. And all the creatures huddled together and they were so sad and so scared because surely they thought everything was over. And one by one, they slowly fell asleep because that's what the daytime creatures do. The nighttime creatures were awake. They were like, oh, this is exciting. But the daytime creatures were asleep and they thought that was the end for them. And then slowly they started to feel some light in the sky back from over there but they didn't see the sun. They just saw this pale light coming up and they thought, well, that's strange. We thought for sure this was over. And then the sun peeked its head up above the horizon to the east and they saw it rise again and they shouted for joy. And everyone woke up and said, oh my goodness, the sun is back. We get to do this again. We hope it doesn't go away, but you know what? It did. It moved across the sky again, but this time the creatures and the humans knew, hmm, it came back once. I bet it's going to come back again. And so they lived their day and the nighttime creatures did their sleeping because they sleep during the day. And as the sun began to dip into the west, all of the creatures, the daytime creatures started to settle down quietly knowing that the sun would rise again and the nighttime creatures started to wake up because it was their time. And then there are those creatures that are really only active during sunrise and sunset. I'm gonna teach you a fun word, they're called crepuscular. The crepuscular animals said, mm, we know this is our time and it's gonna come again in the morning. And that was the first day, the first week, the creation of the world. And I love this story because in our lives, there's so much unknown. There's so many things that we do for the first time and we don't know how they're going to go. Even just this life, right? As we move our way through our lives, we don't really all the time know how it's going to go. We know certain things, but as we learn the things we can count on, like the sun rising in the east in the morning and setting at night in the west, we can anchor our certainty in those things. And those things can help us feel secure enough to move through all the unknown. And there's a lot of unknown and that's okay. And it's beautiful. But as in that first day of creation that we celebrate today, the sun rises and it sets and it's gonna do it all over again. And a year from now, we will have had 365 of those and we'll be doing this again, that we know. So we, may we have a sweet year full of excitement in the unknowns and comforting ourselves with the fear that comes from them too. Shana Toba. I'll share our screen again.
Another special thing that we do at the High Holidays is listen to the shofar. The shofar, this big ram's horn or a little ram's horn that calls us to attention. It's a sound that we really only hear in our community at this time of year. And so we're going to sing about it and then we're going to hear it. I like to hear the shofar blast Sometimes slow and sometimes fast I like to hear the shofar blast Happy, happy, happy new year One more time I like to hear the shofar blast Sometimes slow and sometimes fast I like to hear the shofar blast Happy, happy, happy new year Repeat after me. I like to hear the shofar blast. Sometimes slow and sometimes fast. I like to hear the shofar blast. Happy, happy, happy new year. Shivali, shivali. Now we get to hear the shofar blast from our very own John Lelalid. He has recorded a shofar blast for us. So let's take a listen. John's so good at this. This is gonna be amazing. Okay, here we go. Wow. <laughs> wow moment. 
<laughs> wow, John is so good at that and he loves doing it. And we're so lucky to have him in our community. And we're so lucky to have Iran in our community. Thank you so much for this beautiful service that Iran put together. He made the slides, he's doing all the music. Thank you, we're so delighted to have you. And thank you families for choosing to welcome in the new year with us. So we're gonna close with another uh, we're going to close with Mourner's Kaddish, and then we'll do another song. And we close with Mourner's Kaddish. I'm going to share my screen again. Um, we do this moment of memory, right? We are actually really lucky in our tradition. We have this prayer. It's a prayer that we say at the end of every service to remember those people from our lives who we have loved and who are no longer with us. And not every tradition has this. Not every tradition has a way to call to mind those people and keep them alive in our lives and in our spirits. And that's what we say in our tradition. We say that the soul is eternal. And the way that I interpret that is that those who, who have loved us will remember us and they'll tell stories about us. And so that's what we do too. We tell stories about the people that we have loved and that are no longer with us. And at Mourner's Kaddish, we call them into our minds. And so take a minute with your family and just ask each other, who have we loved and lost? Maybe people who you kids didn't even get to meet. Maybe someone who you're named after, but who you didn't even get to meet. Or maybe they're people who have died this past year and the loss feels really fresh and you want to hold their memories together. So I'm going to pull up our words of Mourner's Kaddish and grownups, you are welcome to join in with me. I'm sorry, I'm going to scoot through all of our slides. Oh, that was a nice journey we took. Yeah, here we go. Mourner's Kaddish, we take a nice tall seat. We hold our loved ones in our hearts as we say, Mit gadal vid kadash me rabba, ve'alma divrach irute ve'amlich machute. Bechayechon uviomechon uvechaye de chobet Yisrael, ba'agala uvizman kariv vimru amin. Yehe shme rabba mevarach le'olam ulameel maya, mit barach vish tabach vit paar vit romam vit nase, vit adar vit ale vit alal shme de kudsha perichu. Leela leela mikol birchata vishirata, tush bechata venechamata, da amiran be'alma vimru amin. Yehe shlama rabba min shmaya, the chayim alenu vel kol Yisrael vimru amen. Ose shalom vimramav, hu ya ase shalom alenu, ve al kol Yisrael, ve al kol yoshve tebel, vimru amen. And with those words of Ose Shalom, we conclude our service this morning. Let's wish each other a Shana Toba and let's sing about peace one more time together.
Shana Tova, friends. May it be a sweet year, a good year, a year of kindness, a year of forgiveness, forgiveness of each other and forgiveness of ourselves. Take good care, y'all. Shana Tova.